I'm Chris Loach, I'm one of the vehicle dynamicists at iRacing, and I developed the unique aspects of the McLaren MP430 for the service. The McLaren Honda MP430 is the first car in iRacing that has any energy recovery system features, so it's a totally new ground for us. The energy recovery system in Formula One is at its root about turning heat that would otherwise be wasted into energy that can be used to accelerate the car. And that's something that over the years Formula One has gotten more and more aggressive with capturing more of that heat to be used to drive the cars. When I first heard that we were considering adding the McLaren to the service, I was really excited and at the same time a little bit nervous because I knew it was a big step for us. We would need to cover totally new ground that we had never done before. In iRacing, we've tried really hard to faithfully capture all those elements of the power unit. And for our drivers, there can be a lot to do to manage that, just as in a real Formula One race, to get the very most out of them. All the normal driving controls are still there, and you can still drive it like anything else and basically forget about the ERS and still have a lot of fun in the car. With the McLaren, you can set how much energy it tries to recover under braking. And the reason that it's adjustable is to allow you to balance the amount of energy that it recovers against how difficult the car is to drive under braking. The more energy you ask it to recover, the more difficult it can be to drive. The energy recovery system only acts on the rear wheels particularly once you're turning the car in, all that braking acting on the rear wheels can destabilize it. So you can think of the energy recovery system as replacing the rear brakes. Here's an example of a big brake zone with very little recovery. And you can see that the battery charge percentage doesn't increase all that much in the brake zone. And then here's another example where we're recovering absolutely as much as possible. And again, in this very same brake zone, you can see that the, the battery charge percentage goes up much more in this case. And that's energy that can be used to accelerate the car. With deployment, the challenge is to manage your battery charge level. With our adaptive mode, you're setting a target battery charge level and the system tries to keep it there. With the fixed, you're managing it yourself, and that gives you the ability to react more quickly and make changes on the fly. With the adaptive, the con is you don't have direct control. You're letting the system manage it, and it's probably gonna do things a bit more slowly than you might like to see, especially if it's a circumstance where you're trying to overtake another car. The adaptive system might not respond quickly enough for you to get the very most out of the deployment strategy. With DRS in the races, a car that's following another car closely can reduce its aerodynamic drag to give it better top speed and give it a much better chance of being able to overtake another car. So there are particular points on the track that if you're within one second of the car in front, it'll enable you to use DRS in the next zone. When the system is enabled for the next DRS zone, one green light will illuminate. When you reach the next zone, a second light will illuminate above the display. That tells you that you're in the zone and you can deploy DRS. However, you have to do that manually. On the car, there's an element of the rear wing that basically opens up, um, and you'll be able to see that in the sim, and that reduces the drag a lot on the car and gives you a lot more top speed. Changing from the Williams to the McLaren in our World Championship Series is going to put a much greater burden on the drivers to not only drive well and drive quickly, but also manage the systems. And the support of people helping them, spotters and crew chiefs, will be really important. This car was by far the most 
complicated, complex one that I have ever worked on in iRacing. And the amount of time and the amount of attention to detail that was required to bring it to be was way beyond anything else. Um, and I hope that's reflected in how fun it is to drive and how engaging it is um, as a product in the iRacing line.